Okay, uh, good morning. This is uh, Geometry uh, 10.6 questions. We're going to answer questions uh, 6, 10, 12, 14, 15, and 16. Uh, all right, so first of all, number six. Uh, number six has uh, this circle where you have 2x and 12, and then you have 15, and the bottom piece here is x plus 3. All right, so the theorem is that you multiply the two segments together and they're equal to each other. So we're going to take um, x plus 3 times 15 to start. So x plus 3, and we're going to multiply it by 15, and we'll get 15x plus 45, and that's going to be equal to the 12 times 2x. So 12 times 2x. All right. Um, let me rewrite that 12 times 2x here. So that's 24x. All right, now we solve the problem. So um, I'm going to subtract 15x to the right. And I get 45 equals 24 minus 15 is 9. Divide off the 9, and 5 equals x. Okay, so now uh, we're going to do number 10. All right, so number 10 is um, this circle where you have uh, two uh, secants. I'm drawing this backwards here. The outside times the whole length, 45, and the outside piece here, 27, times the whole length, 50. That's how uh, you do this one. All right, so whenever you have uh, two secants like this, it's the outside segment times the whole segment. So we set that up just like this. X times 45, and that's equal to the outside segment, 27, times the other full segment, 50. So the outside little piece times the whole segment. That is how you set those up. And you gotta memorize each of these, these theorems. Okay, so this is 45x, and let me grab my calculator and we'll do 27 times 50. And that is 1350, and we divide by 45, and x is equal to 30. And we're only solving for x on these at the moment. Okay, so we always read our instructions, make sure that it's not asking for something else. Uh, right now it's just asking for x. All right. All right, number 12. Number 12 looks like this. It has a tangent, and that's 24, and a secant. The outside segment is 12. The inside segment is x. So if you can keep repeating this, the outside segment times the whole segment is equal to the outside segment times the whole segment of the other line, you should be able to set these up. And you look at this uh, top one here, the outside segment is 24. Well, what is the length of the whole segment? Well, it's still 24. And that's why you see in the theorem it says ea squared. It's the outside segment times the whole segment. It, they just happen to be the exact same thing. So that's 24 squared. And then the other line, you get the outside segment 12. And again, um, uh, this is equals. Oops. Equals. The outside segment is 12. And the whole segment, in this case, is going to be x plus 12. So you got to put that in there. And it's 24 times the whole thing, so it's a group, x plus 12. So you got to distribute that 12 through. So 24 squared is uh, 576, and then you have 12x plus 144. So the setup is what really what we're needing to focus on here, not necessarily solving. You guys can solve the algebra behind it. So you got to focus on how you do all of these things. All right, so now we subtract 144, and we get uh, 432. And we're going to divide by 12, and that gives us 36. So again, we're just solving for x. And then we do the next one, number 14. All right, so focus on how these are set up. All right, so we go to number 14. Number 14, I'm going to draw it over here. 
and that is a tangent of the square root of 3, and we have a secant again. The outside segment is x, and the inside is 2. Again, say it as you are doing it. So we'll just start with the square root of 3, uh, uh, 1 first. So the outside segment is the square root of 3 times the full segment, which again is square root of 3. That's going to be equal to the outside segment of x times the whole segment, which is x plus 2. Make sure you got that. So if you need to pause this and, and think about what I've said and rewind, do that. All right, so now we just solve it. Whenever you multiply a square root times itself, this just becomes the square root of 9, which is really just 3 without the radical. We distribute the x, we get x squared plus 2x. And now, anytime you see an x squared, you should prob probably be thinking, I need a trinomial and factor it. Um, it's not always the case, but that's what I'm always thinking when I see the x squared. So I'm going to move the 3 over by subtracting it, and I get a trinomial that should factor. And factoring is something you're supposed to know how to do. So take advantage of this, even though you may not be good at it. Take advantage of this and keep trying every time, because you will have to do this in every math class. All right, so put an x in the first position of each one. And the 3... Factors of 3 are 1 and 3. Those go in these positions. If there were more factors, you'd just have to keep putting them in until you find the right thing. This is a minus sign here. Um, so that means when you multiply 1 and 3 together, 1 has to be a minus, 1 has to be a plus. How do you know which one's which? By looking at this. It's a plus 2, meaning when we add these two together, it has to give us a positive. So that means the negative has to be 1 and the positive has to be 3. Because a positive 3 and a negative 1 give me a positive 2. You must keep thinking about how to do these things. Now we solve it. That means x is equal to positive 1 or negative 3. And x can't be negative distance. So the answer must be 1. This is all understanding that you just kind of have to keep working at. All right, number 15. Let's move this up. Take a look at 15. 15 is what did they do wrong? Um, so I'm just going to draw and solve it. And this is what you should always do before you even look at what they did. The outside number is 3. The inside is 5. The outside number is 4. The inside value, we don't know. We'll call it X. They just labeled it CD. All right, so if I'm going to solve this, you should say it this way, the outside value times the whole value, that would be 8, 3 plus 5 is 8. That's equal to the outside value times the whole value, which is x plus 4. Distribute, and we solve, 24 equals 4x plus 16. Subtract the 16. Again, if it's going too fast, then pause it and look at it. Divide by 4, and x is equal to 2. All right, so we solved it correctly because that is what you're supposed to do as part of the problem of number 15. Now, look and see what they did. They took uh, the inside segment, which we called x, times the outside segment. And then they took the uh, inside segment, 5, times the outside segment, 3. That's only if your segments are crossing inside the circle like problems 3 through 6. So they applied the wrong theorem to this problem. So if the vertex is on the outside, say it with me, you take the outside segment times the whole length of the segment. If the segments are on the inside of the circle crossing, then it's each individual segment uh, times each other um, set equal to the other two segments times each other. All right, now let's look at number 16. 16 is a nice little story problem. Let me read it, and we'll get started. Okay, number 16. <clears throat> so we have a circle and a secant, and I'll label these the way they have them, D, C, and B. And then you have a tangent here, and this is a... And then this outer segment is 83,000. And this segment AD is 203,000. 
and they want to know the total distance uh, from the satellite D to uh, Tethys B. So we're going to call CBX. All right. And they give you some other information to help you find some things, but that is not necessary once you have this. So uh, we'll start with the AD segment. The outside segment is 203,000 times the whole segment, again, 203,000, equal to the outside segment of the other one, 83,000, times the whole segment, x plus 83,000. And x is going to give us our answer. And now it's just algebra with very large numbers. So 203,000 squared is going to be a scientific notated number. You can write it out if you want, but I'm going to solve it with scientific notation to help remind you how to do this. And you're supposed to be able to do this, and I'll, I'll walk you through how to do it. I'm assuming hardly anybody in the class did this correctly. So hopefully everybody watches this video. 4.1209 times 10 to the 10th power is what my calculator says. All right, um, 83,000x plus 83,000 times 83,000 is going to be 6.889 times 10 to the... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, ninth power. Now, my calculator actually has the whole number on there, but I wrote it in scientific notation um, uh, to show you how to do uh, this part in scientific notation for review. All right, so we're going to subtract uh, the 6.889 times 10 to the 9th. If I need this to be to the 10th, which is what I really need it to be, <clears throat> Um, because they need to match up. To make it to the tenth, I would move it one place to the left, and then I can change it. So 0. 0.6889 times 10 to the tenth. Well, if they are times 10 to the same power, and you're subtracting these, all these extra values are going to cancel out, and it's just a subtraction of 4.1209 4.1209 minus the 0.6889. And you get 3.432 equals 83,000x. All right. Um, now, we divide by 83,000. Okay, so um, 3.4 equals 83,000 X. All right, and at this point, you need to realize that this really isn't 3.432. It's still times 10 to the 10th. Um, the zeros, yes, um, they appear to have fallen off, but they're they, they are still, still there. So if you wanted to look at this, it's 4.1209, and then we need to move that decimal 10 places to the right. So I'm just giving you the visual here. So 1, 2, 3, 4... 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. There's that decimal. And the 0. 0.6889, um, eight, move that 10 places, is going to give you the same thing. And if you subtract those, you get the 3.432 um, with these zeros here. But remember, the decimal's not at that 3.4. It's really back here. So this is really 3.432 times 10 to the 10th, all right? So I'm going to write this number, the big number, so you understand it. 3, 4, 3, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 equals 83,000. All right, now, so if we divide that by 83,000, 3, 4, 3, 2, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, divide by 83,000, and we get 4, 1, 3, 4, 9, um, 0.39 equals x. And that is 413,000. Oops, I'm sorry, 41,000. Okay, I missed this decimal here. This is actually uh, 413,494 with a decimal. <clears throat> and that gives you x. 
So that's not what they want. They want the distance from B to D. So you have to add 83,000 to that. So plus 83,000, and that's uh, 496,494. And that is the correct answer. So a little rough with scientific notation, but you can write the problems out, uh, the numbers out, and do it if you want to. Um, but it's still the same thing. The whole point is you have the outside segment times the full segment is equal to the outside segment of the full segment of the other line. So make sure you got that part. And that's all there is.